Hi everyone, it's Taylor. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm an American expat living in Malaysia and I like to share my life and travels with you. Well, today I'm going to talk about things that are misconceived about Malaysia. You know, like the weather, where it is, I don't know, things like that. Sound interesting? Stay tuned! Before we get started today, I wanted to tell you all about something new I'm doing. Now, I'm sure you've seen Buy Me A Coffee on other people's channels, but I thought I would do it for a couple of reasons. First, I don't want to do sponsorships anymore. I just find them cumbersome, and who wants to watch a, an ad inside of an ad when you're already watching ads? That's how I feel. But I wanted a way for people to say thank you and also help support my channel. You may not realize, but I only make about $5 an hour from YouTube. So in order for it to be worthwhile for me to continue, I need another little revenue stream. So if you like a video and want to support Taylor, of course, still like and subscribe and click the notification bell. But if you really want to thank me or support the channel, send me a coffee. It's easy to do. You just go to the link in the description, click on it, it takes you to buy me a coffee. And from there you just pick whether you want to send one coffee or more. I've already had people send multiple coffees, so that's great. Thank you so much. But anyway, I hope you don't find this as intrusive, and I'm not going to talk about it a lot. I just wanted to get you all started and used to the idea that it's there. It's easy and safe to do. So thanks a lot in advance. I really appreciate all your support. A lot of my viewers write me and ask me about the same things over and over again. You know, like what's it like to live in Malaysia? Well, they're more specific than that. But anyway, I'm going to go through a few of them today and dispel any notions people have about Malaysia. Wrong notions. First of all, one of the most common confusions about Malaysia is where the hell is it? Well, I'll show you on Google Earth where it is, starting at my hometown in Tampa, Florida. You can see it's quite a ways away, but you can see where it's located here. It's just below Thailand and just above Indonesia. And there's two parts of Malaysia, Peninsula Malaysia and East Malaysia, which is on the island of Borneo, and just a different world completely. Well, not completely, but a different world. But I don't think people know that much about Malaysia. It's coming into its own though now, I believe, and partly because of Taylor. Now people seem to know of KL because the Petronas Towers, everybody knows, everybody, I mean everybody in the world I would say knows that. And so that gives a little claim to fame to Malaysia. But people still don't know where it is, but maybe you do now. First of all, we'll start with the weather because that's my most common question about Malaysia. How the hell do you deal with the heat and humidity? Well, you know, I'm a Florida boy. I grew up in Florida, so I'm used to heat and humidity, that's for sure. I also spent 40 years in Washington, D.C. And you talk about heat and humidity, they've got it in spades there. Oops! This is what happens when you think you're recording, but you're not, and vice versa. So this is all a mistake, and I'm just trying to do a voiceover here to talk about what I was talking about there. Yeah, it's always so hot in Washington, D.C., way hotter than it ever gets in Malaysia. Same in Florida. Now, of course, Florida does have some cool weather, but that's offset by the hideous heat they have, I think. Malaysia has an average temperature of 86 degrees, for goodness sakes. Yes, we're having a little bit of a heat wave now, and that's unusual, but it only lasts for a month or two a year. Other than that, it's usually very comfortable. Another question I get asked frequently is, does it rain all the time? Well, you know, we supposedly have rainy season and dry season, but that's just really not Malaysia as far as I know. My experience in Malaysia is that it's pretty much rainy all year round. Yeah, there's some few dry times, but mostly you can count on rain, if not every day, at least every week. But the thing that makes it so much easier to deal with is that it's only a storm, like an hour or so, maybe two. It rarely rains all day or all week, like it does in DC. So if it's raining, you just pop in somewhere and have a cup of coffee or a cocktail 
and just wait it out before you go on your day. It's really not that bad. Another thing people comment on is that it's hot all the time in Malaysia, every bit of it. Well, that's just not the case. If you want to cool off and you live in KL, you can take a short drive, about 45 minutes, to Genting Highlands in the mountains. And it's going to be very comfortable there, more like in the 60s or 70s. So it's always an option to go cool off, and I guess you could live there. But there's really not that much going on in the mountains. But if you like quiet, cool weather, it might be perfect for you. Another question I get asked a lot is what about bugs and how do you deal with bugs in Malaysia? Well, listen, there's bugs everywhere in the world and you just have to get used to how to deal with them and where you live. Now, mosquitoes are the number one problem for most people. They don't tend to bother Taylor, so it's no big deal for me. And they have incredible mosquito control where they're fogging all the time. So really, unless you're out in the forest or out in the country, I don't really think mosquitoes are a problem. Now, some people, like my friend Jill, just get eaten up by them. She goes crazy, and I feel sorry for her, and you too, if mosquitoes bother you. But you can use any kind of bug repellent, you know. Honestly, it's just never been an issue for me, but I don't think I'm a fair judge because they don't really bother me because I taste so bad. But what about other bugs, you might ask? Well, yes. There are other bugs, of course, it's a tropical climate, but it's not that bad. One of the funniest things I noticed right away when I moved here is that there are no window screens. Boy, I can't believe that, because it seems like with all the mosquitoes and small flying insects that you would want screens, but they just don't have them here. I don't know, I've always been up pretty high in my condo, so I think that makes it better. I'm not really sure why they don't have screens. Maybe somebody could tell me in the comments. But getting back to my bugs, yes, there are roaches here in Malaysia, just like they are in the entire world. And when I moved into my apartment in KL, right over there, I noticed that there were some roaches in the apartment and I was kind of freaked out. But I just called an exterminator. They come every two months. It costs 50 ringgit a month and it just takes care of it completely. I have no roaches at all anymore. So. Honestly, it's just like taking care of it like you would in the U.S. You hire an exterminator. Now, there is a funny little bug called the Charlie Ant, a rove beetle. And I'll show you a picture here, what it looks like. Well, they only come around a little bit. I mean, I don't know that I've run into them very much. And it was in Penang. I haven't seen one since I've been in KL. But you can see here what it can do to your arm, which is terrible, or, you know, wherever it bites you. And it's not a bite. These bugs have like poison on their skin, and if you rub it, it's gonna rub off on your skin and be like a burn. Now, they're pretty bad, but honestly, it's pretty harmless. I have seen some people have some trouble with it, but mine went away in a few days, but it is alarming. So once you know what they look like, you know to blow them off your skin and not go like this. So if you run into a rove beetle, do what Taylor does. Honestly, I haven't noticed that many flies here. You would think there would be a ton. Now, of course, there are flies. But when I'm in outdoor restaurants and stuff, I just don't notice them much. So maybe flies aren't that big a deal here. Now, snakes, people are always afraid of the horrible, huge snakes they have in Malaysia. But honestly, I've lived here almost 10 years now, and I've never seen a snake. Well, except in captivity. Like, I haven't seen any snakes in this park. Of course, we're in the middle of the city. I don't think snakes are an issue. Now, my friend Tara, she did have a private landed home and her backyard backed up to some jungle. Now, she did get a python in her backyard once, so you gotta watch out for that. But you just call the fire department and they come and take it away. No big deal. So don't worry about snakes. Something you'll be more inclined to see are monitor lizards. Now, they're pretty much everywhere. I haven't seen so many in KL, but you can just see them walking along the side of the street in Penang. Now, they don't really bother you, but I have heard of people having them inside their house, which is a pretty scary prospect, if you ask me. These things can get huge. Now, I've never heard of monitor lizards being particularly aggressive, but I do think they can bite. But you'd have to get close enough to it for it to bite you. And believe me, no one wants to get close to a monitor lizard. They don't look cuddly at all. Okay, this next subject is a little stickier, and that's religion. People ask me all the time, how could you live in a Muslim country? And they say it in a way that indicates that they know nothing about Islam or how peaceful it is. Now, I'm not Islamic, but 
it is just not an issue. For one thing, it is not a Muslim country. And when people say it's a Muslim country, it drives me crazy. It's secular. They accept all religions here. Now, if you're Muslim, yes, you do have to abide by Sharia law. But if you're not, no, you don't. There's regular laws for everybody else. So don't be worried about that. And Malaysians are the kindest, sweetest people I've ever met. So certainly don't let that be an issue for you. There's huge populations of Buddhists here, Hindus, Christians, everyone. When the country was founded in the late 50s, they decided to make it this way and not strictly a Muslim country. And I think they did the right thing. It's a nice feel. Now, yes, yes, there's going to be tensions here and there. But basically, it goes pretty smoothly with everyone respecting and loving each other. Another common question is, am I going to have trouble speaking only English? Well, no, almost everyone in Malaysia speaks English in the major cities. Let me add that caveat. Because if you go out in the country, yeah, you're going to find some people that don't speak English at all. But it's usually not an issue. Even in that situation, you would find somebody that speaks English and be able to get by. But it would help if you learned a few words and phrases in Bahasa. Everyone appreciates when you try to speak their language. But gosh, don't worry about that. Wow, listen to that bird. I've never figured out which bird that is. If you know what bird this is, leave it in the comments. I'm curious. I hear it all the time. Now, if you're coming from Europe and you only speak German or French or something like that, you're going to have more of a problem. But if you speak English, you'll do just fine in Malaysia. Another thing people commonly say is, isn't Malaysia a third world country? Hmm. Well, yes, it's still a developing nation. But third world? I don't think so. I mean, they have everything here that we have in the U.S. and more. I mean, the infrastructure is amazing, particularly in the larger cities like KL and Penang. Their infrastructure is just like home. I don't have any problem with the power going out, the electricity going out, something like that. Eh, not an issue. It's got a strong electrical grid, and that's important because I know some places, like I have a friend in Myanmar who says her power goes out all the time, but not Malaysia. It's good. But this leads me into another topic that people ask about quite often, is can you drink the water? Well, now, this is a bone of contention between everyone that I've talked to, and I've talked about this before on my channel. But yes, you can drink the water. Yes, it's fine. No, you're not going to get a disease from it. But I still prefer to boil it first. And that's only to get the chlorine taste out. The water is perfectly safe at least in KL and Penang, which are the only two cities I can vouch for. But I imagine it's the same throughout the country. But I was talking to a Malay friend the other day, and he said, oh no, locals don't use tap water. They use filtered water. Well, okay. But all I'm saying is that I haven't gotten sick from the water here, and I think it's just fine. Well, this one's kind of silly, because really, it just takes a minute to get used to. But a lot of people ask, isn't it hard driving on the left? Well, I don't know. I mean, the second time I came here, I had a car. I was in Penang, so the traffic's not quite as bad, but it's still awful there. And I did just fine. I think within half an hour, I felt comfortable driving on the left-hand side of the road. Now, when there's not other cars on the street to guide you to which lane to be in, it can be a little bit confusing and your brain can revert back to driving on the right. But, ooh, you see another car, you're like, oh, I'm on the wrong side of the road. But honestly, it's not an issue. It's not something to worry about. Ooh, there's a bug. Well, there are ants here too. <laughs> so really, don't think anything about driving on the left. It's not an issue. Now we'll talk a bit about shopping. A lot of people say, oh, can I get all the things there that I get in the United States? Well, I would say yes, generally. The malls here are second to none. I've never seen so many fabulous malls in my life. Now, I'm not a big mall person because I used to work in malls when I was younger and I hate them, but I still am forced to go there sometimes. There are a lot of shops there, and even the grocery stores are in the malls, which is very interesting and different to get used to, wouldn't you say? There's very few things I can't get here that I can get in the U.S. I had a little bit of trouble finding cream of wheat, one of my favorite... Thank you, motorcycle. I had a little bit of trouble finding my cream of wheat, my favorite hot breakfast cereal, but I eventually found it. 
So you can find anything here you can find in the States or Europe or anywhere. So don't worry about that. Don't let shopping be an issue for not coming to Malaysia, that's for sure. I did find something early on that I've gotten used to as a Florida boy, and that's plastic insulated glasses. I'll show you mine here. I just got some new ones. But I brought them from the U.S., and honestly, I have not been able to find them here. And you'd think they would have them in abundance. I can only find glass ones, which are way too fragile. The point of the insulated glass is to keep it from sweating all over the table, and it's so humid, a normal glass would. So I don't know, I think somebody could make them and make a whole lot of money here. I had to get these from Amazon, but they came within less than a week, and the shipping was less than I would have expected. But other than things like that, which you can get from Amazon, so it's never a worry anyway, you can get anything in Malaysia that you can get anywhere else in the world. A lot of people are worried about finding the foods that they like. Well, I have to say, they use the term Western food very loosely here. It's not exactly always really good Western food. It's just what they think of as Western food, right? <laughs> but in the larger cities like Penang and KL, you're going to find any cuisine you want. I mean, even the food in the grocery store, I can find anything from around the world, practically. I've been turned on recently to Kewpie mayonnaise, which is made in Japan. Easy to get here, less than the Western's brands, and I love it. I'm a convert to Japanese mayo. I didn't think much of the Malaysian ones, unfortunately. But yeah, don't worry. You're going to find anything you want to eat, whether Italian, French, just whatever. Steakhouses, yeah. Steakhouses, yeah, there's steakhouses. But steak is expensive here, I have to tell you that. I don't think they produce beef here. So all the beef, all the good beef, comes from Australia. And so it's a little bit pricier. But still, not too bad. I haven't compared the prices in the U.S. lately, so I don't know. It's probably still cheaper. But don't worry. Don't think you're going to have to come to Malaysia and eat Char Kway Tiao or Nasi Lemak 24-7, because you don't have to. You can eat whatever you want. It's all available here. Okay, now this one is not something I'm dispelling, I'm going to agree with. People say, oh, Malaysia's just too far away from my family and friends if you live in the U.S. Yes, I know that, and that's why I almost never go back. It's just too far. From Malaysia to Florida, where I live, is about 12,000 miles, so literally halfway around the world. Now that takes me 30, 40 hours in travel time, and I just don't like that. If you have a lot of family back home and you want to see them all the time, then Malaysia is probably not the right option for you. It is far away, but it's like another world, and a great world at that. Plus, you make new friends, don't you? I certainly have. Of course, I still have all my old friends, and with social media today, you can keep up with everybody worldwide. Not a problem. So that's not an issue. So I hope today I cleared up some misconceptions about Malaysia. I know I've talked about most of this before, but I thought it would be nice to put it all in one video because these are common, common questions. So I hope I've cleared things up for you. If you liked today's video, please like and subscribe and check the notification bell too so you won't miss any of my videos. And if you really liked it, buy me a coffee. How about that? Thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to go now and have some coffee in the park. See, it's not too hot to enjoy the day outside, especially in the shade. But that's all I've got for today, everybody. Thanks for watching so much. Talk to you later. Bye. Get, get, get.